Imagine a star system with four giant planets, each bigger than Jupiter, orbiting a bright star surrounded by a ring of dust. What can we learn from such a system? How did it form and evolve? And could it host any life? Welcome to the HR 8799 system, one of the most fascinating and mysterious systems in the galaxy. In this video, we will explore how the James Webb Space Telescope observed the HR 8799 system for the first time and what it means for our understanding of planetary formation and habitability. This is a rare opportunity to witness a system that is very different from our own and to use the cutting edge technology of the James Webb to unravel its secrets. If you are curious about the wonders of the universe and the potential for life beyond Earth, you will not want to miss this video. So stay tuned as we dive into the story of the HR 8799 system and the web observation. The first question we need to ask is, how did the HR 8799 system form and evolve? This is not an easy question to answer because the system is very complex and unusual. The star in this system is about 1.5 times the mass and five times the brightness of the sun. It is also very young, only about 30 million years old, compared to the sun's 4.6 billion years, and it is surrounded by a debris disk, a ring of dust and rocks that is the remnant of the material that formed the star and the planets. The planets, HR 8799b, C, D, and E, are all massive and young, ranging from five to 10 times the mass of Jupiter. They have wide orbits, ranging from 15 to 68 astronomical units from the star, where one astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. For comparison, the farthest planet in our solar system, Neptune, is only about 30 AU from the Sun. The planets are also very hot, with temperatures ranging from 800 to 1500 Kelvin, or 500 to 1200 degrees Celsius. But how did such a system form? One possibility, is that the planets were formed by core accretion, the same process that formed the planets in our solar system. This means that the planets started as small rocky cores that grew by colliding and sticking with other rocks and dust in the disk. Once the cores reached a certain size, they started to attract gas from the disk and became giant planets. However, this process is very slow and inefficient, and it is not clear how it could produce such massive and distant planets in such a short time. Another possibility is that the planets were formed by gravitational instability, a different process that is more common in massive and young disks. This means that the disk became unstable due to its own gravity and fragmented into clumps that collapsed and became planets. This process is faster and more efficient, and it can produce massive and distant planets in a short time. However, this process is also very chaotic and turbulent, and it is not clear how it could produce such stable and resonant orbits. So James Webb can help us test these hypotheses and constrain the parameters of the system. By measuring the spectra and luminosities of the planets, we can estimate their masses, ages, and compositions. By measuring the structure and composition of the disk, we can infer the history and evolution of the system. By comparing the data with theoretical models and simulations, we can determine the most likely scenario for the formation and evolution of the system. This system is very dynamic and stable. The planets are locked in a mean motion resonance, a regular pattern of orbital periods that keeps them in harmony. For example, for every one orbit of planet B, the outermost planet, planet C completes two orbits, planet D completes four orbits, and planet E completes eight orbits. This resonance prevents the planets from colliding or ejecting each other and maintains the stability of the system. But how did such a resonance arise? One possibility is that the planets migrated from their original locations to their current ones due to the gravitational interactions with the disk and each other. As they migrated, they encountered resonances that increased or decreased their orbital eccentricities or the shapes of their orbits. Eventually, they settled into a resonance that minimized their eccentricities and maximized their stability. However, this process is very complex and sensitive, 
and it is not clear how it could produce such a precise and robust resonance. Another possibility is that the planets formed in situ, or in their current locations, due to the gravitational instability of the disk. As the disk fragmented into clumps, some of them became planets, while others were scattered or accreted by the star or the planets. The planets that survived were already in resonance due to the angular momentum conservation of the disk. However, this process is also very uncertain and stochastic, and it is not clear how it could produce such a consistent and regular resonance. With James Webb, we can test these hypotheses and refine the orbital elements of the system. By measuring the positions and velocities of the planets, we can determine their orbital periods, semi-major axes, eccentricities, and inclinations. By measuring the variations and correlations of these parameters, we can infer the strength and nature of the resonance. And by comparing the data with theoretical models and simulations, we can determine the most likely scenario for the origin and maintenance of the resonance. So, what are the atmospheres and habitability of the planets? This is the most intriguing and exciting question to answer, because the planets are very diverse and exotic. The planets have different colors, ranging from red to blue, indicating different atmospheric compositions and temperatures. They have clouds, made of dust, ice, or metal, that reflect and scatter the light from the star and the planets. The planets have spectra, showing the absorption and emission of various molecules, such as water, methane, carbon monoxide, and ammonia. What can we learn from these atmospheres? One possibility is that the atmospheres can tell us about the formation and evolution of the planets, as well as the disk and the star. It can reveal the chemical and thermal history of the planets, such as the accretion and differentiation of the material, the irradiation and heating of the star, and the mixing and transport of the gas. It can also reveal the physical and dynamical processes of the planets, such as the rotation and circulation of the gas, the convection and advection of the heat, and the condensation and precipitation of the clouds. Another possibility is that the atmospheres can tell us about the potential for life on the planets, or at least the conditions for life as we know it. It can indicate the presence and abundance of water, a key ingredient for life. It can also indicate the presence and abundance of other molecules, such as oxygen, ozone, methane, and nitrous oxide, that could be signs of biological activity or biosignatures. However, these molecules could also have non-biological sources, such as photochemistry, volcanism, or comets, so they need to be interpreted with caution and context. James Webb can tell us about these atmospheres and assess their habitability. By measuring the spectra and colors of the planets, we can determine their atmospheric temperatures, pressures, compositions, and structures. By measuring the variations and correlations of these properties, we can infer the atmospheric dynamics, chemistry, and climate. And by comparing the data with theoretical models and simulations, we can determine the most likely scenarios for the origin and evolution of the atmospheres and the possibility and probability of life on the planets. The HR 8799 system and the James Webb observation are both remarkable and groundbreaking achievements of science and technology. They represent the culmination of decades of research and development and the collaboration of thousands of scientists and engineers from around the world. They also represent the beginning of a new era of exploration and discovery, and the inspiration of millions of people who are curious and passionate about the universe and our place in it. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I will try to answer them. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.